So the process was, and was for many, many years, a very human process in which the voters mark marks on paper, and then humans would look at the marks on paper and count them up. And it was, uh, it was anticipated that there would be errors made by humans in looking at the marks. And so this gave rise, at the time in the 1950s and 60s and 70s, there was a, an impression that machines would be more efficient and more accurate and more reliable. And so there was a, a tendency to move towards machines, but that tendency was much aggravated by the 2000 election in the United States where the uh, presidential candidates came to within a, maybe 200 votes in the state of Florida. And the process then has to examine the election records more closely in order to remove the errors which are inherent in the, in the process. In that election, the errors, a bunch of different errors showed up and the one that became most well known was so-called the hanging chad. The ballots in the election in some counties in Florida were resembling a IBM punch card and the way the voter would vote is to take a stylus and push out the, a square of cardboard out of the card in the place which represented their choice. And because the machines were not properly serviced, the, uh, the little squares of cardboard built up underneath the card to the point where the voters were unable to push the, the squares of cardboard out. And in fact, sometimes they would push out a, one side of the card and not the other, and it would hang by a corner or two corners or three corners. And that was known as the hanging chad. And there was published a photograph of a particular election judge using a huge magnifying glass to look at the, the uh, ballot. And that, that photograph and that magnifying glass, which by the way, I saw about two weeks ago, at the Smithsonian Museum in Washington. That photograph caused the, the elections industry to come alive to sell machines to replace the paper in the United States election systems across all the states. And for about 10 years, the uh, states were buying new voting equipment using federal money in about 2002 or 2003 the U.S. government allocated a huge sum of money to give to the states to replace the, the punch card voting systems and other uh, legacy voting systems with electronic counting. And that primarily was provided by something called the Direct Record Electronic Device, or DRE. And that device would allow you to vote on a screen, on a perhaps a touch screen, but, but in any case, you would see the, the choices on a screen, and then the results would be tabulated within the machine, within some memory, and there would be nothing left for a human being to look at to check whether the, either the interpretation of the voter's intention or the sum of all of the intentions was actually done accurately. And there are still, I think, five states that use primarily or exclusively those types of machines where there is no possible verifiability of the election. There was actually one other interesting voting system called the uh, lever machine, which was actually a very complicated mechanical device where the voter would actually switch little physical levers and then to indicate the choices and then pull a gigantic lever which would cause little counting devices, spinning wheels in the back of the machine to turn by one turn to increment a number. And then those numbers would be looked at at the end of the night. So that was a uh, very heavy, very expensive uh, mechanical machine used for voting. And it was generally recognized that electronics would probably be better, cheaper, lighter, uh, but still expensive, by the way. And so the, after the money was allocated in 2002, these lever machines and the paper machines were replaced by so-called DRE. 
it's important that the uh, window machine is used for a portion of the election tabulation, that there is an independent process that actually can oversee and confirm that. And that could possibly uh, either the uh, original system that's doing the, the initial tabulation or the system that checks, they might have machines involved in them, but those machines must be software independent, which means that they don't source from the same technology and in any aspect. And ideally, when you have humans and machines, humans checking machines, you get that kind of independence. But if you have a machine checking a machine, then you may not. In fact, there are auditing systems that are being presented right now that are being tested in which a machine actually for auditing purpose takes the ballot image that's already been scanned by the original system and checks it to see uh, look for discrepancies and that is not software independent because the same scanner uh, was used in both cases and so that's why we are demanding that the audit systems go back to the actual paper which the voter marked hand marked or actually verified what the machine marked.